All right, YouTube fans, it's been a while since I did a video, but um, I've spent probably about a good six hours total. And what this is here is it's an FX 30 caliber pellet liner. Uh, my friend Dave got a few pellets stuck in here. If you can count those, those are nine 30 caliber pellets. This guy told me there was about six in there. I don't know. And there's still at least one more stuck in the liner, which I'm going to show you how we're going to get it out. So to the left of that liner is a brass rod. It's a quarter inch rod. And I'd make a tool, thanks to some YouTube fans or other YouTube uh, gurus out there that made this tool. Dave and I tried to pound them out with a hammer and a steel rod. And believe it or not, we spent three hours doing it. It did not work. If we were good at physics, we would know that when you pound lead, it expands and it just like glued itself to the side of the barrel sleeve and it made it even more difficult to get out. So I went to Home Depot, bought this 1 8 inch, uh, 12, 12 inch long drill bit. And I drilled through the skirt of the drill of the pellets. I could not get all the way through. Um, and that's probably why is I found out there's at least nine pellets, well, ten pellets in there. I used that drill bit to drill a hole from the skirt side. I tried to pull um, using the new tool I made. And uh, the new tool is uh, this screw, this brass screw here. It is a number 10 by one inch uh, wood screw. I used the mill over here to mill off the head. And then, pretend this is the brass rod. I use this uh, 90 degree uh, cabinet maker uh, device thing here. I held it up, I clamped it in, held it like this, and Senor Ethan here uh, helped me use my blowtorch down there, some solder, and yes, it's a messy work spot, workplace. I don't have time to clean yet. I'll clean when I'm all done. So we basically uh, soldered on that screw tip onto this brass uh, rod which is now uh, that screw uh, is screwed into that last pellet and yes I was after these pellets started coming out I was able to um, start pulling some pellets out and lo and behold I'm just surprised as hell that there's more than six pellets in there because that's what Dave thought was in there but uh, Ethan you're gonna film me um, I've, again, like I said, I went through the skirt side with the drill bit, and then now I've got, I'm pulling through the front now. This is the, um, the exit side of the barrel, and back here is the breech side of the barrel sleeve. And so it does, the pellets do go out easier, so I screwed into the cone of the pellet. And now, I got a 600 pound mill that I'm hoping, oh shit, I think it slipped off. It does not... Nope, nothing. I didn't get it out. So we're going to go back in again. Take some of this lead off. I'm going to go back in again. I got these gloves here because I didn't want the um, the barrel sleeve to get scratched against the surface of the table at all. So now I'm going to thread in again. That's why that's number 10 is pretty good for 30 caliber pellet sleeve because... Uh, Small and number 10, I think, would be too loose, so... There I go, eat it. Okay, it's coming now. So I felt it give, so it's dislodged now. And it's coming. I could feel the sleeve actually spinning, you know, the, the grooves in the pellet sleeve. And here it comes, Ethan. Hopefully this is the last one. All right. See that guy there? That's number 10. The reason why it's black is uh, uh, my friend Dave and I poured WD-40 in there also. I'm going to look through this sucker. And I don't know. I can't tell. So now I'm going to shove it in through the breech side. See if this can go through. Oh, shit. Guys, number 11. There's another one in there. Frickin' A. Here I go again. You see I'm getting closer and closer to the vise there. Turning this, this is all being done by hand, of course, because I think what the other guys are saying is if I used machines to drill and stuff, excuse me.
excuse my French there. Yeah, I'll get, get rid of some of this extra shit. grip here. My gloves here. So now we know we got at least 11. <clears throat> it gave. Number 11. Number 11. <clears throat> the reason why we're using brass, uh, brass screw, brass guide, is uh, that the brass is supposed to not scratch the inside of this uh, Barrel sleep, the sleep. Oh fuck! You guys are kidding me, <laughs> dude. There's another one. Holy crap, Dave! Man, <laughs> uh, I no comment. I think we're gonna have to give some more. I'll get some more slack from here. Well, I'm all the way up to the thighs almost. I need grip. I stopped counting, dude. I don't know. 11 or 12. E. This is 12. Ah, here it goes. That was a little easier. <clears throat> Alright. Now let me tell you guys. There's just no way this would have been possible without this, this uh, doctored up tool. If I had nothing better to do with my time, I'd make these and sell them to you. So that's 5... 10, 12. Let's test again. Breach side, please. No more, Dave. No more. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Now we're going to just pull some uh, cotton patches through here to clean it up. And uh, it looks good. Hopefully this thing's still, still a straight. I don't know, man. This thing's taking a lot of beating because Dave and I beat the living life out of this thing with a steel rod. And... Uh, Oh, my floor is not too level, but let's just roll it, huh? All right, Ethan, let's see here, buddy. Oh, uh, well, I can't tell. You can hear it. Oh, uh, we hope it's straight. Doesn't not much we can straight. do. Not much we can do. I mean, it is what it is. It's $100. And uh, if it sucks and the accuracy is lame, then um, my friend's just enough to buy a new barrel sleeve. That's all it. That's all, YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys.